بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ام دكتور مدثر شباز اسوسيت بروفيسور سهارا ميديكال كوليج نارووال as we were discussing about the development of venous system in the previous lecture and during our discussion we have seen the development and fate of the umbilical and vital veins today we are going to discuss about the cardinal system of veins how it develops and what end result develops from these cardinal veins this form the main venous drainage system of the body that is the from the all the uh, systemic veins they develop from cardinal vein that is superior vena cava and inferior vena cava as well as renal veins and the uh, veins of the upper limb and veins of the head and neck region that and the veins of the venous system of the thorax that develop from these cardinal veins basically the cardinal veins consist of anterior cardinal veins and posterior cardinal veins the anterior one which drains the cephalic portion of the embryo that is head and neck region and the upper limb the posterior cardinal veins drains the rest of the body that the abdomen abdominal wall and the lower limb and the thoracic cage these anterior posterior cardinal veins they uh, join together before they enter into the uh, sinus venosus and they form the common cardinal vein now here we see that this is the common cardinal vein and this is the anterior cardinal vein draining this phallic part of the embryo while these here is the posterior cardinal vein that drains the rest of the lower body and these are the systems which are separate from it so this common cardinal vein then enters into the sinus venosus obviously initially they are all paired veins the both veins and in the previous lecture i have uh, discussed that although it seems that these anterior and posterior name given to the cardinal veins they seems to be misnomer as uh, they should be given the name uh, to the anterior cardinal vein this phallic one and the posterior cardinal vein the caudal veins uh, but uh, for the description in this state of embryo initially the name anterior and posterior cardinal veins were given to it the main component of the venous system and arterial system 4 mm of embryo at the end of the fourth week it has shown here now formation of the vena cava and the appearance of the anastomosis from the left and right is designed in the such a manner during the development that the blood from the left side moves towards the right right side because if we see in the adults the all blood from uh, the body uh, that comes into the right atrium so it has to come to the right side so blood is shunted from the left side to the right side by the anastomosis and anastomosis between uh, anterior cardinal veins that develop into left brachial cephalic vein which then joins the right brachial cephalic vein and forms the superior vena cava which enter into the right atrium so most of the blood from the left side of the head and the upper extremity that is the upper limb that is channeled to the right through the brachial cephalic vein and the terminal portion of the posterior cardinal veins entering into the left brachial cephalic vein that remains as the left superior intercostal vein means that will drain the intercostal spaces upper intercostal spaces and this uh, that uh, the second and third intercostal space that is drained by the left superior intercostal vein and this is a part of posterior cardinal vein terminal portion of the posterior cardinal not the anterior but the posterior cardinal vein the superior vena cava is then uh, by formed by the right common cardinal vein and proximal portion of right anterior cardinal vein 
So we have uh, read this. Now we will confirm it on this diagram. This diagram is very useful in understanding the development of the venous system. In my opinion, the students should uh, learn this diagram, try to draw this diagram over and over so that it should have a complete understanding of the development of the venous system. Here we see that the, this is uh, anterior cardinal vein of both sides. If this is right and this is left, so this is anterior cardinal vein. And here is the posterior cardinal. They are joining together to form the common cardinal vein. And the anterior cardinal vein, they are joined together by an anastomosis. So this anastomosis between the anterior cardinal veins is developing into the left brachiospheric vein. If we see in this diagram that this, this is the posterior cardinal vein on the left side and it is disappearing. Blood is shunting from the left to the right. But the proximal portion, this ferric portion of this remains as left on the left side, left superior intercostal vein. The left common cardinal vein, the rest of the cardinal, left cardinal system is disappearing but the terminal portion of the common cardinal vein remains and is forming the coronary sinus which is actually is the main venous drainage of the heart itself, coronary sinus. And we are seeing in this diagram that the rest of the posterior cardinal venous system is disappearing distally. On the right side, if we see the terminal part of the uh, posterior cardinal vein is joining with the azygous venous system, that is the uh, supracardinal veins, and entering into the junction between the anterior cardinal vein and the common cardinal vein, that is the uh, that is that is the internal jugular vein and uh, the commons uh, and coming from a junction uh, interior, uh, internal jugular vein and subclavian vein they are joining together and uh, forming the brachiospheric vein here it's on the right side is entering into it if we see this diagram then we see that there is a anterior posterior cardinal venous system developing and along with that there is a set of supracardinal veins, supracardinal veins, which is colored as light green or green in this diagram, supracardinal veins. It is forming a different uh, venous system, that is the azygous system. We will see how it is formed. Another, another set of the veins is also present below, that is the subcardinal vein venous system means that below the heart, subcardinal vein, below the diaphragm, subcardinal venous system. And this venous system, subcardinal, is mainly forming the veins of the kidneys as well as it is forming the main inferior vena cable system of the body. So we will see. And the terminal part is a the segment of the uh, subcardinal venous system is the sacrocardinal veins. Here we see these are the sacrocardinal veins. And these sacrocardinal veins, they are forming, contributing into the formation of the inferior vena cava. So, anastomosis between subcardinal veins form the left renal vein. Left subcardinal disappears and only distal portion remains as left needle vein. Right subcardinal veins become the main drainage channel development to renal segment of inferior vena cava. Anastomosis between sacrocardinal veins form the left common iliac vein. The right sub, uh, uh, sacrocardinal vein becomes the sacrocardinal segment of inferior vena cava. So, what we have understood that the inferior vena cava is connected uh, that the uh, Renal segment is then connected to the hepatic segment forming the inferior vena cava when it is joined with the sacrocardinal segment. Inferior vena cava system is complete. 
So again we come to the diagram and we see here confirm our finding that here is the subcardinal system of the vein. So what we see on the left side it is disappearing and here is the distal segment this one that remains this uh, left subcardinal that remains at the left subarthmetic or gluidal vein. But on the right side, if we see the subcardinal system, there is a hepatic segment and anastomosis between the two is forming the renal veins, which uh, when they join together, they form the renal segment of the inferior vena cava. Below this, on the right side, on the left side, the sacrocardinal veins, they are disappearing. Here is the anastomosis between the sacrocardinal veins. And this will form the left common iliac vein. And the continuation of right sacrocardinal vein that form the common, right common cardinal vein. And when they join together, they form the inferior portion of inferior vena cava. On the right side, we see that the right gluidal vein is joining the inferior vena cava. But on the left side, we see that left spermatic or gluidal vein is uh, draining into the left renal vein. This is because of developmental region. So, it's a fifth and seventh week. Additional veins are formed, subcardinal veins. Uh, 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 which drains the kidna, kidneys, this is the subcardinal veins, sacrocardinal veins, they drain the inferior extremity, that is the lower limb, supracardinal veins, these are the supracardinal veins, which drains the body wall by way of intercostal veins. Here we see intercostal veins. So it is the supracardinal venous system which will give rise to the azygous system and they will drain into that through their azygous system, drain the, uh, the body wall or the, the thoracic wall uh, through this system. The anastomosis uh, between right and left system so that the blood is channeled from the left to the right because the heart uh, right atrium is on the left. So most of the blood is rechanneled towards the right side. So when we see the development of inferior vena cava, which what we have understood from the previous diagram that there is a hepatic segment and when we were discussing the development of vital and veins, in that segment we have seen that the uh, uh, portal system draining into the liver and the liver is then uh, draining into the inferior vena cava through hepatic veins and there is formation of hepatic segment of inferior vena cava. Here it is shown. And then when, when we come below the uh, inferior vena cava, there is a, a renal segment, there is a pre-renal segment, there is a renal segment and there is a post-renal segment. So if we see pre-renal segment, it's, it's right subcardinal. Uh, veins that form the renal segment, it's uh, derived from the subcardinal supracardinal anastomosis. It's anastomosis between the two that forms the uh, renal segment. And there is a post renal segment we derive from the right supracardinal. It means sacrocardinal or supracardinal means there is controversy between the two. Some says the sacrocardinal and some says the supracardinal. The most of the book, it is the supracardinal vein uh, that form the uh, post-renal segment. So this diagram is also very useful in describing the development of the uh, vena cava. So there are, we can say, four to six in some books, five uh, are given in some, there are uh, six given. The caudal segment is additional one in my opinion and the caudal part of the right uh, posterior cardinal vein. Then is the uh, post 
renal segment from the right supracardinal vein then is the renal segment from the right sub sub supracardinal vein anastomosis and then is the prenal segment the subcardinal veins and into the subcardinal anastomosis and then is, there is the hepatic segment which is formed by the anastomosis between the right subcardinal and right vitellin vein this hepatic segment is formed by the anastomosis between the right subcardinal and right vitellin vein suprahepatic segment from the right vitellin vein is formed so in this way the inferior vena cava is formed develop here is a simple diagram shown by the uh, mac uh, mac mcclure butler and array they have shown through these simple diagrams how they develop the venous system that develops and weeks are shown here that is the week 6 week 7 and then the further development is i guess system now this is derived from the uh, por- uh, another part of the uh, venous system that was the supracardinal system so there are two when we go back if we go back to this diagram so here is the supracardinal venous system one is on the right side and one on the left side but now we see that uh, the right side uh, draining the intercostal veins and on the left side the uh, cranial part the upper part cranial part of this is losing connection with the uh, second and third and they are forming the left supra intercostal vein that is draining into the brachiocephalic at the junction of brachiocephalic vein but the rest on the left side is forming uh, draining the rest of the intercostal vein form, forming hemi as i guess means but on the right side it is named as is i guess system the anastomosis between the two hemi is i guess and the is i guess system is here the anastomosis they develop a connection between the is i guess vein and the hemi is i guess vein so that the blood from the left side is drained towards the right side and then this is like a system uh, with the uh, with the terminal portion of the uh, posterior cardinal vein is draining into the uh, at the junction of into the right uh, junction of right and left brachiocephalic vein into the superior vena cava so hemizygous vein uh, cardinal part of left supracardinal vein so hemizygous vein on the left side and uh, the isigous vein system on the right side is formed by the supracardinal vein system on the left side it is uh, it is drained the upper second and third they are drained into the brachiocephalic vein system and the anastomosis between the hemizygous and isigous so uh, developing so that the blood from the left side should be channeled towards the right side into the isigous system here is shown more exclusively that this is isigous system here is a superior vena cava here is the formation of uh, the junction between the uh, right brachiocephalic and left brachiocephalic from the superior vena cava and into the superior vena cava draining the isigous vein and here we see that the anterior cardinal veins uh, uh, continuation is forming the internal jugular vein and on the from the uh, side joining the uh, subclavian vein which is draining the upper limb so the subclavian vein along with the internal jugular vein they form the brachiocephalic vein or innominate vein in this is the external jugular vein subclavian vein and this is these are formed by the anterior cardinal veins anterior cardinal vein this portion is formed by the anterior cardinal vein and on the left side here we see that the system the supracardinal system it is disappearing here 
this uh, part of the coronary sinus that is the common cardinal vein uh, on the left side is forming the coronary sinus otherwise this is joining through the uh, right uh, left uh, subcostal right uh, left subcostal vein into the brachiocephalic vein so what the fate of circulatory system is that umbilical vein uh, they disappear and the remains are ligamentum teres hepatitis ductus venosus present in the liver system drain, uh, rechanneling the blood uh, right from the umbilical vein into the uh, inferior vena cava that uh, disappears and then remains at ligamentum venosum and the umbilical artery itself it form the medial umbilical ligament because after birth they all are closed defects of the venous system often there is a left superior vena cava uh, the presence of left anterior cardinal veins and obliteration of common cardinal vein proximal part of the anterior cardinal vein on the right side in such case if on the right side on the right side there is obliteration of the common cardinal and the anterior cardinal vein to in such case uh, the blood uh, from the right is channeled towards the left side so the inferior vena cava superior vena cava will be on the left side than to be on the right side superior vena cava if on the right side the inferior cardinal vein and the common cardinal vein they become obliterated so the blood will rechannel towards the left side forming left superior vena cava the left superior vena cava drain into the right atrium by way of left sinus hole that is the coronary sinus because we have seen already double superior vena cava may persist uh, there is persistence of anterior cardinal vein and failure of left brachiocephalic vein formation so that will uh, give rise to two superior vena cava right one will drain separately into the right atrium and the left one through the coronary sinus will drain into the uh, right atrium double here we see here we see here is a left superior vena cava and here is a right vena cava and here we see that if uh, there is a coronary sinus which is draining into the right atrium actually in the adults it is carrying uh, blood from the heart venous drainage of the heart itself to the right atrium but during the failure of the development it this anomaly can occur in which the coronary sinus may carry whole of the uh, blood from the upper uh, extremity that is the head and neck and the upper limb through the coronary sinus into the right and in other case two spira vena cava may develop that one is uh, from the right uh, common cardinal vein the other one on the left side is draining through the coronary sinus into the right atrium so this is the double in uh, superior vena cava in likewise in the inferior vena cava there may be a double inferior vena cava when the left uh, sacrocardinal fails to fuse loose connection with the left subcardinal vein so there becomes double inferior vena cava or inferior vena cava may be absent and when the right subcardinal vein fails to make connection it with the liver and shunts blood directly into the right supracardinal vein the blood stream then from the caudal part of the body reaches heart by way of azygous system if inferior vena cava formation uh, at the liver side or below it uh, if it loses connection with the right supracardinal vein then the blood will drain through the azygous system and superior vena cava so there is no inferior vena cava draining into the right atrium and this abnormality is usually associated with other heart mal malformations here we see that how if this segment is not developing so the the this renal segment the hepatic segment is not developing so this renal segment is directly anastomosed to the 
supracardinal venous system and then through the azygous vein draining into the superior vena cava. So there is no inferior vena cava. The segment uh, between the renal and the hepatic that is not forming. So whole blood is draining into the right atrium through the superior vena cava, whole of the blood from the lower part of the body. So that is single and there may be double inferior vena cava also when the hepatic segment and the uh, renal segment they are draining differently into the uh, heart. So there is a circulation before birth and then we have seen already that before birth uh, the, uh, the blood from the placenta 80% saturated with oxygen and the nutrients um, by the um, is uh, coming towards the field by through the umbilical veins and this blood through, uh, passes through the ductus venous into the inferior vena cava, vena cava short circuiting the liver smaller amount enters in the liver sinus and mixes with the portal circulation uh, and there is a sphincter mechanism in the ductus venous that regulates the blood flow and this sphincter closes when the uterine contraction renders the venous system to high preventing a sudden overloading of the heart so here it is given how the fetal circulation is going on that the these are the internal uh, internal iliac arteries through which the two umbilical arteries they are going towards the placenta and single this is a uh, vein umbilical vein but this is colored red because this is carrying oxygenated blood uh, coming uh, from the placenta and then it is entering to the liver liver sinusite there is a sphincter mechanism and then through this ductus venosus it is entering into the inferior vena cava directly and this inferior vena cava then is entering into the uh, right atrium so this is fetal circulation here we see that the uh, this inferior vena cava entering into the right atrium and this is directly blood directly to the right uh, left atrium through this uh, foramina ovale that we have seen when we were discussing about the development of heart chambers there is a foramina will form by the ostium primum and ostium secundum the blood from the upper extremity is coming through the superior vena cava mixing it and most of the blood is directly to the left atrium and through then the circulation and the blood entering into the right ventricle is then also redirected towards the left side through this ductus arteriosus because still the lungs they are not meant for oxygenation they are developing they can be oxygenation only when the after the child birth ductus venosus is redirecting blood from the pulmonary trunk to the aorta so then we have seen this that the inferior vena cava enters in the right atrium foramina veil and then the, uh, the left atrium mixes and the left ventricle and ascending aorta now is the so what we understand during its course uh, from the placenta to the organ of the fetal blood uh, in the umbilical vein gradually loses its high uh, oxygen content mixes with the desaturated blood theoretically this mixing may occur in the following places the liver in the inferior vena cava the right atrium in the left atrium and at the entrance of ductus arteriosus this mixing can occur. Then uh, we see that after coursing through the descending aorta, blood flows towards the placenta by two umbilical arteries, and the oxygen saturation in the umbilical artery is 58%. And at birth, 
the circulatory changes they occur that what uh, you can imagine what will happen after birth there is no blood from placenta so there is beginning of respiration of the baby so what will happen ductus arteriosus should be closed and raise pressure in the left atrium pressure in the right atrium will decrease that will cause the foramen vein to close so these two things ductus arteriosus as as well as foramina vein they need to be closed so that there should be no shunting blood from the right side towards the left side because now the lungs they are functioning so here we see that the shunting blood is obliterated now is the portal vein with the portal vein then entering into the inferior vena cava and then entering into the right the foramina ovale is closed and the also uh, ductus arteriosus is closed and that remains as ligamentum arteriosum and there is no mixing of the blood now after birth closure of the umbilical arteries they will form the lateral umbilical ligament distal umbilical medial umbilical ligaments proximal portion remains as superior cervical arteries umbilical vein closed ductus venosus and uh, ligamentum teres hepatitis will form and the ductus venosus form the ligamentum venosa these changes will occur at birth the closure of ductus arteriosus closure of foramina ovale ductus arteriosus uh, contraction of muscular wall and bradykinin kinins that substance released from the lungs and uh, initial inflammation complete anatomical obliteration of the uh, intima is thought to be 1 to 3 3 months and this obliterated ductus arteriosus form the ligamentum arteriosum foramina will increase pressure on the left side causes the closure of this foramina vein and decrease pressure on the right side the first breath press is a septum primum against the septum secundum and during first day apply however this closure is reversible if it reverses that will remain into the patent foramina of vein similarly patent ductus arteriosus can develop and now the development of the lymphatic system by the fifth week the lymph vessels they start developing and from the lymph lymph sacs and from the developing veins are derived from the mesoderm starts in the fifth week and sources from the mesoderm and form the lymphatic sacs the first lymphatic sac paired jugular lymph sacs at the junction of internal jugular and subclavian vein that first lymphatic sac that appears the lymphatic system uh, development later than the cardiovascular system and not appearing until the fifth week of gestation its, its origin is not clear but they form the mesenchyme in the situ are mereized sac like outgrowths from the endothelium of the veins six lymph sacs they are present they are formed two jugular at the junction of subclavian and anterior cardiac vein two iliac at the junction of iliac and posterior cardiac vein one retroperitoneum near the root of the mesentery one cisterna cailae dorsal to the retroperitoneal sac so there two to four and to six lymphatic sacs initially they develop in the body there are numerous channels which connect the sacs with each other and drain the lymph from the limbs body wall head and neck region two main channels right and left thoracic duct join the jugular sac with the sister and chyle as soon as anastomosis form between these ducts the thoracic duct then develops 
uh, from the distal portion of right thoracic duct. Uh, the anastomosis and the cranial portion of left thoracic duct. And the right lymphatic duct is derived from the cranial portion of the right thoracic duct. So there is changes in the thoracic ducts. The actual thoracic duct, which is on the left side, is uh, formed uh, in this way. Both duct remains their original connection with the venous system and uh, empty into the junction of internal jugular and subclavian vein. Circulatory pathway then and is the development of the lymphatic system. So, we have seen the development of lymphatic, uh, the venous system as well as the development of the lymphatic system. Inshallah, next time we will uh, discuss about the development of other system also.